Hey YouTube. <coughs> so, as you can see, I pretty much have this engine all torn apart. <coughs> and, um, I haven't gotten the camshaft out of it yet. I didn't take the timing chain off. And you can see that on there. <coughs> but what I'm, I want to do here is for someone who may be, um, contemplating doing an engine rebuild, it's not quite as complicated as you might think, although the most important thing is that you have the right tools. And uh, for instance, this engine stand, it's not really anything fancy, but it certainly makes life a lot easier when it comes to uh, tearing the engine down and putting it back together. What I want to show you though <coughs> is I have all the pistons and the and everything out of the engine and it's important that you keep all of the parts together that belong together now years ago there used to be a mark on the side of the uh, connecting rod and as well and the cap that would tell you what piston you were working with <clears throat> well for some reason today they don't have that they must have a lot of confidence in uh, their uh, engineering skills and their machining skills that they don't have it but what I do I used to take a punch and punch a number on the bottom here there's always a flat surface down there but uh, after a while I thought that a punch wasn't a good idea because it might do something to this cap because you're working with very close tolerances here like one ten thousandths of an inch and you know when it comes to uh, the difference between this and the journal or the crankshaft. So what I do is I take an engraver and I put a mark on there like this is the number one piston. Okay, so it's in the number one place on the crankshaft. <coughs> so um, what I do is first I go through the whole crank and I put a number one, two, three, up to eight or you know however many motors or engines you, yeah, engines, uh, cylinders you have. And then, after I mark all of the uh, rods, what I'll do is I'll take the cap off. Okay, in other words, this is inside there. So I'll take the cap off, and um, I try to slide the bearing out if I can, because you never know. The bearing can tell you a lot of things, and I'm going to explain that in a minute but I'll try to take the bearing out and the one thing that is very very critical is that you don't let the sides of these rod bolts scratch these journals in any way these journals should have a mirror finish they should not have a mark on them no mark at all and uh, you know to have a good engine build and if you scratch the journal with one of these, especially if it's a sideways scratch, you know, if the scratch is enough to divert oil, you're going to have a hot spot and eventually the crankshaft will fail, or the connecting rod will fail, or the bearing will fail. Something will fail from heat. So it's very important that you don't scratch anything. Now, I've been doing this for a, long, for a pretty long time. I've rebuilt 30 engines already and um, counting. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest engine builder. I'm not going to be arguing with people in comments about how to rebuild an engine. I'm just telling you how I do it. And I've had two engines fail over the past 30 that I've built. One was because I sent away the rods on an old 51 Chevy to have babbitted bearings put in. And when they were put in, I just had no way of matching them up to the crankshaft. So that engine failed. Number two was I had rebuilt an engine in a 65 Corvette that I have and when I rebuilt it I was in such a hurry to get it out that I was didn't give it any break-in period before I was screaming down the road with it and a connecting rod in it eventually failed so but other than that I have rebuilt numerous other engines that have gone on for 40, 50, 60,000 miles that I know of and, and done very well. <clears throat> so anyway when you go to take this apart like this would be you know this goes around the journal naturally and the cap is on 
I take the cap off, I set the nuts and the cap to the side, I try to get the bearings out, and I try to keep the bearings so that I know where they were, top and bottom. I'm not doing this because I'm putting the bearings back in. I'm actually going to throw these bearings away and replace them with new ones, but I need to use these old bearings to find out what the clearances were at the time that the engine was making noise because it'll help me to fi figure out what's going on with the motor. But one way to keep from scratching the journal is to take rubber hose and slip it over top of this. It only has to be that long. A piece of like 3 8 inch hose, something like that. Slip it over these so that it's sort of snug and then what I do is I'll take the bearing out and I'll take a hammer, the wooden end of a hammer, and I'll put it against this and bump this until it comes out the cylinder. Now, a lot of people, what they'll do, let me just show you this, <clears throat> a lot of guys, and it all depends on, you know, what your slots are on this, but let me just turn this around here. Oh, I've got to oil this sucker. Okay. What a lot of guys do is there's a lip that you can't really see it. At the top of the cylinder here there's a lip because the piston <coughs> does not quite, if you see here the piston ring is about three-eighths of an inch or so below the top of the piston. So this ring never comes to the top of the cylinder. It's slightly below the cylinder. <coughs> so what happened is the, the ring is what wears the cylinder, not the piston, the ring. Okay, so the ring will come up so far and it makes a little bit of a lip there. Now, since I'm going to be replacing these, and since these uh, rings have <coughs> some wear on them, uh, normally what you would do is you would take a ridge reamer, which is a tool I'll show you later on in another video that you put inside here, you adjust it, and you crank it up and it actually takes this lip off. Now if you run your fingernail up through here, you can just about touch it. Now for me, if I come up there and my finger actually catches really well on that, then I'll take the ridge reamer and take that ridge out before, that's my dog in the background, before I pop the piston out. Otherwise, if it's a very light ring, like if I can barely feel it in some places, I'll just bump the piston out because I think that the ring will compress enough to come out of there. And I don't have any problems with it. I don't break anything. Nothing bent. Okay? So, uh, you know, going over that again, the piston would be down inside there. And actually this piston, it would be on the other side. This is actually number two, but it would be down inside notch faces the front of the engine, a little notch on this Chevy anyway, this is a, an 80 some an 80's, 88 to, or 89 to 90 something series engine and I believe it's a 5.7 because it has a 4 inch bore yeah 5.7 so <clears throat> anyway the notch faces the front of the engine and you want to remember all that stuff okay because you're going to need to know that later so what I do then is I knock the pistons out and as soon as I knock them out, I put the bearings back in that, that belong there, put the cap on. Now you can see on this one, if you look closely there, there's a little edge. That means that that cap is on backwards, so the cap actually goes like this. Okay? It goes on like that. So, I'm hoping I got all this in the camera. And then I'll put the nuts on and you got to sort of turn them down. You don't have to tighten them, but you got to turn them down all the way or else the bearing cap will fall out. And you don't want them separated at this point. You want them to stay together. Now, you know, there's a lot of guys who get into stuff and they just tear things apart, throw stuff all over the place. And if that's the kind of a mechanic you are, I have no problem with that because I've seen a lot of good mechanics work out on heavy equipment, uh, especially working in the dirt they have no clean place to work yet these guys manage to do things pretty right but for me because I'm sort of fussy and I have the time I'll keep all this stuff together because what I'm gonna do after the fact is I'm going to measure everything I'm gonna measure everything and put it in an Excel spreadsheet so that I compare I can compare what I had 
to what I have when I'm done doing the engine rebuild. So this is just a short video here of you know how you get the piston out, what you want to watch for, how you want to mark it. If you don't mark the cap and you mix these caps up, your engine could very well fail because the caps from stress and strain will take on different shapes that are, you know, we're talking ten thousandths of an inch or clearance that we must have for oil. So if you don't have that ten thousandths, the engine will fail. So there's a lot of reasons why an engine will fail, especially when, you know, you're not watching what you're doing. So I started to clean this one. I use some regular engine cleaner. I have a parts cl cleaner, about a 20 gallon parts cleaner I bought at Tractor Supply. I'll soak this stuff in that. I'll use a light wire brush. Um, this is aluminum. You can get away with a steel brush as long as you're not going crazy with it. You know, just take your time with it and you can get all this stuff off. Now I haven't done that yet. I just cleaned a little bit off because I can read what the piston is showing me okay and I'm gonna teach you that as we go here for instance I don't know how well you can see that journal there but this journal has a lot of scratches in it and there's some wear in it now that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing because dirty oil will put scratches in um, but there's no blue, there's no melting, there's nothing there that's telling me that this was actually wrapping, you know, or, or the trouble of the, in the engine. However, there's some shiny spots there which may, you know, it may have rubbed a little harder than other places. But again, it, it depends on how hard it's done it. So I'll show you how to measure some of this stuff in another video. The other thing you want to check is, you know, do you have free movement of the uh, wrist pin? The wrist pin is the pin that holds this connecting rod to the piston. Do you have free movement? And you want to hold it sort of still and do you have movement side to side? In other words, not, not side to side, but is the top of this moving this direction, which would indicate movement in the wrist pin. So you can tell, you know, whether a lot of that is okay or whether it's not okay to use it again. And, and we're not talking here about you know building an engine that's going to cost ten thousand dollars to rebuild. I'm going to rebuild this engine for the cheapest amount of money that I can rebuild it with. I'm going to use the best parts that I can find, but I'm not going to be overcharged for them. So you know, I mean, if you guys are interested in doing an engine build and you want it to be something that you know for you older guys like me, Grumpy Jenkins would do, which I've read his book many times. There's a lot of things you can do to a motor to rebuild it. It could take you months to get an engine built. I don't have months and I don't want to spend months on this. I just want to get the piston rings working so the engine doesn't blow oil or burn oil. I want the, va the uh, bearings good so that I don't have to worry about the engine coming apart. And I, don't, and I will probably take a look at the heads, although I'll show you the heads later on in another video. They don't look too bad, although for some reason the last two cylinders were bad. I showed you the spark plugs on the last video and what was wrong there is those spark plugs had been uh, subjected to either some kind of fluid in the gas, either an additive in the gas or there was oil leaking down the, one of the uh, valve guides over top of it. So anyway, that's the start of what I do when I build an engine, okay? So remember, the most number one important thing, if there's no numbers on it that can indicate this, the difference between pistons, then put numbers there. And a little engraving tool, you can buy them anywhere, you know, probably at Walmart, I don't know how much that thing cost me, probably 10 bucks, or wherever you want to, engrave, this is a number one for me, engrave the number on there, you know, look at what you got going, like you have a mark here, shows you the front of the engine, so you know as long as you don't take this apart any further as far as the rod goes then you know how it goes back into the cylinder okay so that's the start of this video I'm at 11 minutes already and I'm gonna end it there but just hang in there because I'm gonna go through this whole thing as best I can and I'll try and do every show you every little move that I would make uh, to be able to uh, get this engine up and running 
Okay, guys, have a good one, and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.